everyone, I'm Linda Nickel, and my fellow moderator, Leslie Sessoms, is also here. So welcome to the Texas Women Photographers Circle. This is our monthly meeting. Every month, I invite a guest speaker to share their work, inspire us to try something new, and I'm hoping that we can build a stronger community of photographers. The schedule for upcoming presentations is on my website at lindanickel.com as well as the links to previous sessions on YouTube. Tonight's guest is Kathy Chassie. Hello. A landscape photographer based in the DFW Metroplex. That's the Dallas-Fort Worth um, uh, Metroplex for those of you outside of Texas. Her Instagram feed is filled with an impressive collection of landscapes, cityscapes, astrophotography images, and whatever else catches her eyes. A lot of these images she makes while she's traveling. And in tonight's presentation, Destination Unknown, Tips to Travel for Landscape Photography. Kathy's going to share her tips and tricks to help you plan ahead for your next adventure. If you're on Instagram, look for Kathy at Kathy Chassis Photography. And with that, I wanna welcome my friend to the room. Hey, Linda, thanks so much. And thanks so, for having me. I, well, you didn't really have a choice now, did you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's do disclosure. A lot of times when I invite speakers, I don't know them, and I love that I don't know them. But when I know a photographer has content, has a skill set, um, is somebody that I admire, I'm going to persuade them to come and do a presentation for whatever group I'm hosting. And you have done several of my um, happiness hour presentations. Mm -hmm. And when I uh, started doing these monthly meetings um, on Zoom for the women's photography circle, you were on my list. And I thought, no, just not, you're busy. You're really, you're one of the busy, busiest people I know. <laughs> I knew you were going to be on my list. I just didn't know how soon I could get you. Um, so that's a little bit of public disclosure. We know each other. We've actually shot, we've done an all nighter. We have a couple times, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I, you know, I think the longer I stay up, the more brain cells I kill. So, um, but I want to say the first time we, did we first meet at Astro or did I meet you? Yeah. 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 The, so, at Fort Griffin, that yeah. first meetup. Yeah. Our first meetup was at Fort Griffin yep. and we started at sunset thinking, we can sleep in the cabin. We did not sleep in the cabin. We, we did an all nighter and, um, that handful of women, I think there were 10 of us mm -hmm. were crazy enough to, to stick it out, but we had a lot of fun. And with that, you know, you're somebody that I, 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 I like a lot. So thank you for doing the presentation. I kind of skimmed over a bio because I feel like when I know somebody, I, I kind of like, well, don't, doesn't everybody know that? What did I miss? Do you want to share anything? I actually I have it. I actually have it on my presentation. Okay, great. Um, okay. So should I, should I just kick off and get started? It's all yours. Thank you. Here are all of my social channels. So I'm most active on Instagram. I added a QR code if anyone has a phone to just follow along on my Instagram. I have a business Facebook for my photography. I'm on Twitter just a little bit. And my website has been under construction for a year. That is one thing that I just haven't had a chance to put back up. Um, if anyone has an amazing post suggestion, that's one of the things that is tripping me up is, is where to go to host so that I can sell some great photography. All right. So about me, I am in DFW. I live in Frisco. I've been uh, back in Texas since 2016. I am a New Englander through and through, even though I haven't lived in New England for a long time. Um, but I've been coast to coast. I've been in Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Indiana, Virginia, California. And now Christy from New Jersey, I actually forgot my six months in, in New Jersey. <laughs> Isn't even on my list because we were there for such a short time. I'm just realizing that I didn't even include it. 
Um, I work at Sally Beauty Holdings. Uh, I have a new position leading stores for Eastern North America, which has been really um, taking up a lot of my time, but that does give me the benefit to travel while I'm working too. So I will get into that in a little bit. I have four kids, an amazing husband that does everything so that I can do what I do. And I am so passionate about photography. And hopefully, um, I know we talked about this earlier, hopefully this will be more than a side hustle one day. And I absolutely love to teach. So Linda, I'm so glad uh, that you invited me because I'm going to ladies share all of my secrets on how I plan all of my trips. All right, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, I did include some of my um, landscape portfolio just to kind of introduce myself. My most amazing trip in the last couple of years was up in Canada, and you're going to see a lot of amazing images that I was able to capture during my time. To the left is Spirit Island. If anyone has been there, that's probably one of the most magical places on earth that I have ever been, and it was on a bucket list trip that I was able to take in September of 21. On the right is Acadia National Park. That is kind of my home sweet home. Um, it's about an hour and a half from where I grew up. So I'm in Acadia literally every single time I'm home in Maine. I had the amazing opportunity this June to go to the Pacific Northwest for the first time and Utah is still on my list. Um, but I did get an opportunity to go to Oregon, Washington, and Northern California, and I'd always seen the amazing images of the redwood trees through the fog, and that was an amazing um, morning in the redwoods. And then night photography is one of my passions, and on the right, many of you, I'm sure, have seen the image in Brookings, um, but I was able to capture that this past summer. I love to travel for the seasons and to the left is my image of fall in Acadia. To the right, I actually went for the first time in a really long time this past fall to Lake Winnipesaukee up in New Hampshire and I saw the most amazing color when I was there in the middle of October and that red camp on the water and the reflection literally made me pull over, grab my camera and find a place to shoot that image. And then in the center, I had never traveled internationally. If you don't count Canada and Mexico, I did get an opportunity to go to Europe for the first time. And part of my um, presentation tonight is going to share how I found that amazing spot to shoot sunrise in Amsterdam. To the left, another image from Maine. Uh, a lot of people post the fish shack on Instagram. And it is actually about 20 minutes from my mother-in-law. And I finally had gotten a chance to go when the tide was high enough to get that reflection image. And then to the right is another image of Acadia. I had an extended trip last year and was able to capture Acadia National Park in all four seasons in 22, which was really amazing. To the left, my first stop almost all the time when I go home is Portland headlight. So that is a sunrise that was very, very cold. I love also shooting Portland headlight all four seasons. And I'll tell you all of my tips and tricks on how to know when to go. And then in December, I had the amazing opportunity to go to Toronto. And when I went up there for work, I asked if we could stay somewhere where I could see the Toronto skyline. And I actually found that location from an Instagrammer that I will share you. I'll share with you how to get that connection. And I know, Linda, you're all about Instagram connections. Yes. The left, <laughs> the left image is another of my favorite spots in Maine, um, Pemaquid Lighthouse. And if anyone has ever been there, there's actually a really shallow tide pool that is almost always there that you can get the reflection of the lighthouse in the water. You almost have to have your camera and tripod flat in the almost in the water. Um, but that was the best sunset I'd ever seen at that location. And I had been, I've been dozens of times. So that was exciting. To the right is my last image of 22. I am currently in Navarre Beach, Florida with my family on vacation. Um, we go home back to Texas on Saturday, but that was a sunrise um, a few mornings ago. That one's new. 
to the left, I'm always chasing sunrise and, set and sunsets when I'm home in Texas. And to the left is my most popular Texas um, sky shot. Um, I literally was speechless, so I called it speechless when the sky lit up like it did. Um, just a little pond near my house. And then I'm also known to brave the elements. And the image to the right on Lake Louisville in Oak Point was probably the most, the coldest I probably have ever been. Even though I've done winter in Acadia with 10 below zero, the, the wind was completely crazy. And I didn't dress for the elements during that uh, sunset, but it was amazing to witness the ice forming on the rocks in the foreground and having such a burn in the sky. So that was a really cool image. All right. So I am always planning. I don't plan super far in advance, um, but I'm always researching to try to figure out where to go to these amazing places, regardless of where I'm going to be. I use Instagram a ton. I use an app called GPS Track, so I'm going to go into that. I use Photo Pills, and I didn't recreate any tutorial or anything on on Photo Pills because Sherry Hunt, who's an amazing photographer, did an extensive tutorial on Live This Happiness Hour. So go watch that because Sherry knows so much more about Photo Pills than I do, and I learned a lot from her. I also have two ebooks that I had purchased from places that I was going. Um, that might be a great resource for you. I use notes on my phone for route planning. I'm going to share all of the weather apps that I use. I use Sunset WX, which we'll talk about. And then I highly recommend if you're ever going to be in a national park to invest in a national park pass. Because that a few years ago was the best investment. And it actually encourages you to go. Okay, so the first place I go for travel research, believe it or not, is Instagram. And the very first thing that I did when I was starting out about seven, eight years ago is follow other photographers. Linda, I think that's how you and I first got connected. And then the meetup was because of Instagram. Um, so you can really make some amazing connections when you follow other photographers. In my very early days of Instagram, I really loved when a photographer would post their settings because I was not on manual mode when I started. So I always share my settings. And if I use filters or, or whatever equipment that I use, that is always included in my post to hopefully help another photographer. In the second uh, screenshot, I use the places feature to the very far right. Hopefully everyone can see that on the screen that's, uh, that's underlined. I'm always looking for places. So for example, I had a trip to Niagara Falls and the very first thing I did was look on Instagram to find locations in Niagara. That would be great. And there's a US Falls and there's a Canadian Falls and I was trying to determine which would be better. The third image is when you see someone post something that you want to go capture. And I actually did an amazing trip in September 21, as I mentioned, to Canada. And Icefields Parkway was one of the things that was on my list. So if you click on Icefields Parkway to the right, it'll actually bring up the map so that you can look at all of the people that have tagged that location and the map so that you can figure out where that particular location is. One of the biggest challenges right now with social media and especially with Instagram is there are fewer and fewer people that are putting their tags for their specific locations because of the amount of people that have gone over and over and over and actually created um, bad situations for some locations. So if in that case, and the reason I was able to get that Toronto shot was because I actually DM'd a local photographer in Toronto to see if he would share a location with me. And he actually did and gave me a suggestion for sunset and sunrise. Um, so another photographer that was just amazing. But tags 
uh, for locations and location searching is what I use Instagram for the most when I'm doing research. All right, so I mentioned that I just went to Niagara Falls and I figured out that Horseshoe Falls was where I should do um, my evening out in the falls. And you can see to the, on the image to the right, that little building down there. I've always seen that encrusted in ice or snow. And unfortunately it didn't snow the one night that I was there, but I was able to get some amazing images from Niagara Falls based on my research on Instagram. All right, the next app that I use, and I literally use this almost every single day, is GPS Tracks. This is a free app. There is a pro version so that you can track your um, locations and things, but I have the free. I do not um, use the pro version. The, the free version works perfectly for everything that I use it for. There is a map view to the far left for planning your route. So. If you were to actually just be with me and see how many <laughs> locations that I have on a map, um, it is so crazy how much I've included. But what's great is you can put a location and you can put a photo of location so that you can see exactly where you are. And this, um, and they're kind of on top of each other because I have a lot of different locations, but that happens to me, my Death Valley um, trips that I just did, did a quick screenshot. The second image gives you the full listing of my waypoints. So you'll see I have eight waypoints listed in Joshua Tree National Park. I have 24 that I just listed in Maine, seven in Navarre where I am. Um, I have 99 waypoints when I do a New England fall road trip of depending on which direction I go. Um, I have two in Oklahoma up near where my daughter is. I found out an amazing Milky Way location. So I tagged that one. When I went with Sherry to the Pacific Northwest, I have 10 waypoints. I have wildflower trips for Texas. I have White Mountains. I have Yosemite, all kinds of different places. The third image is when I click on that New England fall road trip, you can actually bring up all of the different locations. And when you use GPS tracks, you actually use the GPS coordinates to track everything on the map. So when you add a waypoint, you can click the photo and you can take a photo live or you can pull a photo off of your phone and then you change the coordinates to be exactly where um, you want to be on the map. And you'll see on my New England fall road trip list, I have several, and this is just one little screenshot, they default in alphabetical order, but you can actually drag them up and down. If you say, okay, I'm going to New Hampshire and I want to list everything in New Hampshire, then I'm going to go to Vermont. I list everything in Vermont. You can actually drag and drop to make it a little easier for you to plan your route. Um, the reason why I use this every single day, so I'm in Navarre Beach, there's amazing shelling here. And if you already follow me, you may have noticed on stories this week that I've been doing a lot of amazing shelling. I've been using GPS tracks to track where the good shells that we have found so that we can go back um, on the next low tide. It's a little geeky, but yeah, I love shelling too. All right. I'd mentioned local photographers who publish ebooks. So I grew up in New England and I had GPS tracks a couple of years ago when I really wanted to get out and do a fall road trip, but I went ahead and purchase David Long's ebook. If you don't follow David on Instagram and you love nature photography, especially up in the Northeast, he is an amazing photographer. And I bought his ebook and I learned so many new places that I could shoot and photograph. And what's amazing is David included his GPS locations as well for the shots. And he did lots of amazing suggestions on when to go, where to shoot, how to shoot, how he got that shot. Um, on the left, Paul Zika's Guide to the Canadian Rockies. That actually was the one reason why I was able to capture the Northern Lights because I had read his book in advance and I was able to get the next shot. So he had suggested in his book that Lake Minnewaka was a great location for Aurora. 
And there was one night that I looked at my Aurora and saw that I was in range to see the Aurora. And I left my condo at 3.30 in the morning to go capture that. And that was the first time I had seen the Northern Lights and it was just magical. But it was because I knew that this location faced the correct direction north so that I was able to capture that. And then you, if you didn't notice David's cover shot in New England, I was actually able to go um, this fall. And I did go to that same location of the Old Stone, Old Stone Church in West Boylston, which is just a great place in the fall. All right. So as I said, I'm always planning. So I use my notes app on my phone and I didn't research if there's a Samsung version, but I'm sure there is. Um, I'm always taking notes. And this is an example of my notes for my Canadian trip. Um, I, on the, on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday image, I literally put what I want to do each day. And then I check it off as I am able to take advantage of that so that I know where to go, when to go, and based on my map on GPS tracks, in what order. And then on the left, I just list all kinds, and I guess it's the same because this is Thursday and then Friday, um, but I, I really try to plan out as I go and as I find locations. And you'll see on the image to the left that I didn't make it to Wedge Pond or Goat Pond um, or Grassy Lakes. But next time when I go back to Canada, it'll definitely be something that I'll make a point to go to. And as you can see, my research in advance paid off. Um, I was able to see the most brilliant sunrise at Vermilion Lake, which is the top left image, um, Skyfire in the mountains. I was able to finally go to Moraine Lake, which is the whole reason why I wanted to go to Banff National Park. And uh, that was a solo journey, just me and my Canon camera. Uh, and it was amazing to experience that and go as many hours as I wanted to in the day and go to all the places that I wanted to go on my list. I did plan and I highly recommend if anyone is going to Banff to also spend time in Jasper National Park. I only spent one day in Jasper the first time I'd gone to Canada in 2019. And I had to go back at least two days to capture all of the things on my list and uh, Pyramid Lake in Jasper was just magical at sunrise. And again, all in the research from Instagram and all plotted out on my GPS tracks. All right, weather makes such a huge difference. Um, tonight, I didn't go out for sunset here in Navarre because there were no clouds. And if you're a landscape photographer, you know that the weather makes a huge difference. And if anyone doesn't use the Windy app, you are missing out. Um, I had seen a photographer post the cloud conditions on one of his uh, posts, Benjamin, he's an amazing photographer up in New England. And I messaged him, I said, what are you using so that you can see the cloud conditions? And he told me about this amazing app, Windy. And when you, and if you, hopefully you can see my cursor, there's a three little um, hamburger menu right there that you click on and you can bring up cloud cover, high clouds, low clouds. It gives you weather. You can see this is a quick screenshot from Wednesday, yesterday's weather here in Navarre. We had a storm come through and you can see that point where the clouds were to the left and not to the, um, excuse me, clouds to the right or to the east. And then it was clearing to the west. This app can also predict the future. And I've already looked, we are driving home on Saturday. Um, are we gonna have any clouds for sunrise Saturday morning? And right now the prediction is completely clear. So you can go forward in time to see what's gonna happen with cloud cover, which is really amazing. If you're an astrophotographer, if you do sunrise and sunset, you know how important the clouds are. If you do astro, you'd like no clouds to be completely clear. Um, Windy is an app that I use a lot um, when I'm planning trips. I also use the Weather Channel app and AccuWeather. And I will tell you the Weather Channel I feel is the least 
effective. Um, this morning, for example, Navarre said no clouds, completely clear. And AccuWeather on the same time <laughs> said there would be um, 46% cloud cover. And believe it or not, AccuWeather was almost accurate. Um, Weather Channel was not correct in that case. So I always check all three to see if they're aligned or if they're different. Um, so that I can really truly get a photo, get a um, idea of am I going to get the right photo? I am I going to get con the conditions that I predict? Because I'm at the beach and I also love shelling, do I bring my equipment with me when I go out for sunrise? Or like tonight, I didn't go out for sunrise or sunset um, because there were no clouds. Hopefully that makes sense. So I use the three of those apps in conjunction with one another to really get a good picture of the conditions that are ahead. The other thing that I use every single day for sunrise and sunset, because I'm always chasing the sun, <laughs> um, is Sunset WX. And if you haven't used this, it's actually a website. So I have it bookmarked on my phone. Um, it's a favorite so that I, I click on it all the time. This is updated at 6 p.m. local time for your sunrise forecast and at noon local time for your sunset forecast in the day or the, the day of or the day after. And if you're out of the country, I actually use this when I was out over in Amsterdam and it was really accurate. That one morning that I was able to get the sunrise on the, at the bridges, um, was because I had looked at the sunrise forecast the night before to know that, okay, I'm going to go ahead and make tomorrow the day that we're going to check out that location. Uh, so again, those are as close to the actual time. Like at noon, I always check what the sunset forecast is. And then at 6 p.m., I usually look for the morning after. Sometimes I use, look at sunrise before work when I get up at five and see, okay, is, is, is it going to be a day where I leave early and stop at the lake, lake on my way to work to catch a sunrise? Um, or is it something that um, I don't have to bring my equipment that day? And I really enjoy sunrise and sunset. So I'm always scouting this page. All right. I wanted to include all of the information on my gear. And I will share with you that I bring all of my gear on trips where I can check a bag. I will have it, I will share that if I have a, a quick trip um, for work and I'm pretty sure that I won't have a car or I won't be able to go to an amazing location, I will just bring one lens, one body, and my tripod that travels. And I'll put that in my carry-on. So I have a mini version if I'm at work and probably won't be able to go out, but I bring it just in case. Um, if I go to Niagara Falls, for example, anytime I go to any of my destination locations, I am always bringing all of my gear. Um, I didn't bring my macro lens when I went to Toronto and it was snowing and I was so disappointed that I didn't bring my macro because I couldn't capture the snow. So I added my macro lens on my list and I'm actually going up to New England next weekend and I will definitely have my macro lens with me because of the snow. So I am a Canon shooter. I have a mirrorless R5. My favorite lens, and for those of you who are landscape photographers, your wide angle is probably most often on your camera body. Um, absolutely, my 15 to 35 RF lens is always on my camera. And I actually have the one that's 2.8 so that I have the low aperture so that it also is an amazing astro lens. I, I'm a wannabe birder. So I dabble in bird photography. We do have lots of feeders in my backyard. I will love to learn how to continue to attract them. I know that they really need um, more trees than I have. There's only two in my backyard. So that's part of the problem, but I love my 100 to 500. Um, I use that, I actually used it this afternoon for moon rise. Um, I use that for birding when I'm attempting to learn. Oftentimes I'll use that in landscape for sunrise or sunset. 
So I always bring my 100 to 500 with me. As I mentioned in my macro, I still have the old EF that needs the adapter. And then I also have the Sigma Art 14 millimeter 1.8. And I use that with the adapter for my Astro shots. Um, that is an amazing low light lens. So absolutely that is with me when I do astrophotography. I have used Lee filters because I'm at the at a body of water quite often. So I have a graduated uh, filter set. Most often I use the 0.6 and 0.9, and I have a big stopper and little stopper. Um, since I'm around water quite often, I use filters to slow the shutter speed most often to get that dramatic look in the water. I most recently, actually it's almost been a year that I switched to Benro. I have a columnless tripod so that I can get as close to the elements as possible. And you can see um, to the right, that picture of Toronto that you saw earlier, I almost had the tripod completely in the snow so that I could get that shot. And then I have a ProMaster Cityscape backpack, which carries all of my gear. And one little tip, because backpacks get heavy, especially with all the gear that I have, I actually put it inside a hard side suitcase when I travel. And that helps one, it's rolling instead of on your back because that can get heavy. Um, and I always put my camera backpack in the hard side bag so that it's just easier. I do have TSA pre-check. I invested in that many, many years ago because it's easier to go through so I don't have to take any of my camera equipment out um, when I go through security. So that is one thing that may, if you don't have pre-check, it might be harder um, to go through security if you do put your backpack inside a hard side case. But I feel, I find it's so much easier to roll. They also make rolling camera bags, but they're not as easy to convert. Usually when I get to my destination, grab my backpack out of the suitcase and go. All right. So here's your checklist for your next adventure. Use your Instagram app to find all of your locations and use that places app. The GPS tracks, if you haven't downloaded it yet, that is a magic app that can track all over the world where you want to go and keep track of all your locations, old and new, as you're planning. Photo pills, as I mentioned, use your ebooks from the locals who know. Um, use your note for route planning. That is so critical so that you cannot, I'm, I'm forgetful. I'm a note taker. So anytime, um, I, this, uh, image to the right in Harpswell in Maine, um, I, someone had posted an amazing Milky Way from that location. And I wasn't sure that I would be back to Maine during Milky Way season, but I went ahead and put it on my list so that I wouldn't forget. And then I was home and it was clear sky and it was close enough that I, made a trip out there. And so that one was just simply because I had it on my notes. And then the location to the right, my mother-in-law lives in Saco and I had never, ever gone anywhere in Saco. And a local photographer that I follow posted that Saco Health Reserve was an amazing location to take photography. And I have been with my husband for almost 31 years. His mom has lived in Saco for almost 10 and this fall was the first time I checked out the Saco Preserve, and it was really, really amazing. And again, that was because it was on my notes, so that I there was a day that I didn't go to Portland Headlight, but I decided to check it out because of the fall color. And I looked on my list, and it was three miles from her house, and it was so amazing to um, remember that I had that spot to go to. It was on my map. It was on my notes. And... Uh, I went and it was great. Don't forget to check your weather apps, check Sunset WX, connect with your photo friends that we have all made here tonight. Grab your gear and let's go. And literally, we do that a lot, right, Linda? <laughs> <laughs> we do. We just go. We sometimes we go. I, there's not a lot of thought. Sometimes it's more like, okay, we've got food and we've got gas. We just go and. And I love that. Uh, I live for those moments. I need more of those. Absolutely. Moments. Me three. 
And I'm realizing that I talked really, really fast <laughs> in the beginning. Not at all. Um, but again, here are all of my things. Um, um, if you guys have any questions, this is a good time to throw them in the chat. There is one question that I think Alice asked. Um, she wants to know, are your GPS points shared publicly or do you use it only for yourself? And she's wondering- I use it for myself. <laughs> yeah, and that's- Yeah. And that's, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I just, I knew that, but I wanted to confirm it. So- yeah. um, let me look real quick. Um, somebody asked, okay, this is a good question. Anne um, wants to know, how do you organize your images? So I have too many external hard drives to publicly admit, <laughs> um, but I have, I, I have everything by year and by destination. So um, I actually, since I'm here in Navarre, I created my 2223 Navarre folder and every trip or destination has a folder. Um, there, I go to Maine so often, sometimes my main folders, I have several. So I'll have a winter main, spring main, fall main, winter main, um, so that I have all four seasons because I was home um, that much last year. But yeah, I organize everything by destination by year so that I can go back. And um, as I was preparing for this, there were a few images that I realized I still have yet to um, process. I'm like, oh my gosh, when I get home, I have to go back to that particular folder and it's easy. I also, the one thing I, I'm seeing, I can see the pop-up main folders or subfolders. I have main folders. So um, I find that if I put everything in, like if I did 2022, I, I'm out with my camera so often I would lose it. So I have, I do 22 Navarre, 22 main, 22, I, I have each destination in its own folder. And then sometimes I'll have a subfolder depending on how many cards that I pick up and use. Um, sometimes I'll do card one, card two, because um, I take so many images and I keep so many images, which I probably shouldn't. Yeah, you know, uh, storage is cheap. So <laughs> it also slows you down to sit there and have to call everything. Mm -hmm. I'm an enabler, so um, <laughs> just buy another hard drive. That's my solution. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm not seeing any other questions. I'm going to say thank you, Kathy Chassie. Um, I know how busy you are, and I knew that you're probably going to be on your Christmas vacation still, and, and yet I still like, yeah, let's put you on the calendar. So thank you for letting me take up your time and the information that you shared, you know, I'm a traveler too. And so I'm sitting here going, yes, I do that. Yes, I do that. So I feel like I'm on the right track. Um, and then there's crazy over there. So some of the stuff you do is a little over and above the things I would even consider doing, but that's what makes you um, have the catalog, the portfolio, the reference uh, images that are or you're, one day, I hope that we get you back and you'll, you'll be able to say, and I'm offering workshops. So yes. <laughs> yeah. So one day, know. yes. Yeah. Hopefully sooner than later. All yeah, right. Yeah. You guys, you can connect with Kathy through Instagram. Um, Kathy Chassie photography. That's a, the best place to start. So and I'm going to have this on recording. So you'll be able to uh, go back and look and get her Twitter handle and your, her Facebook business page, if you're interested in that. All right. Thank you for joining us. And next month on Thursday, February 2nd, our guest will be Pam Heimer and her presentation, The Reluctant Photographer. I think Pam's going to provoke us all to look at our own photography goals. So until next time, I hope that you pull out your camera and let your creativity be your guide. With that